What is a calorie? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to explore some key terminology that is really important for your level three nutrition exam. That's going to include what is a calorie, what is a killer calorie and some other terminology that will help you get on top of all of the different words that you need to know ready for the exam and for working with your clients. But before we get started, I want to let you know that there are three mock questions to help you test your knowledge on today's content. If you're on our blog, simply scroll down to the bottom of the blog and you will see the three mock questions there. If you're not on our blog, click the link that is with this video and it will take you straight there. And you can then test your knowledge and check that everything you're learning today is staying in. So let's start with some key terminology. I want to explore what is a calorie to start off with. Now, a calorie is a unit of energy. It's a measurement, just like you have a centimeter or a meter or a kilo. A calorie is a measurement. And we use this to measure the amount of energy in the foods that we eat. But this energy measurement is actually related to one kilocalorie, so a thousand calories calories is enough energy to raise one kilo of water by one degree celsius now in our bodies we don't need to build to raise the 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 temperature of our body temperature we don't need to raise the temperature of the food we eat or the water inside it but what we do need to do is to extract that energy and this is just a measurement of that so although it's measured in relation to how it increases the temperature of water that energy is still very important to us and we need that for the energy day to day. Now, I mentioned something in there called a kilocalorie. Now, a kilocalorie is actually the same as what we would know as a calorie. Now, let's explore this a little bit more because it sounds a bit confusing. A kilocalorie is actually 1000 calorie units. And that's if the calorie is spelt with a little c. But one kilocalorie is the same as one calorie spelt with a capital C. That's really important. If you see a capital C, that actually means that they're talking about a thousand calorie units, which is one kilocal. So whenever you see anything recommending how many calories you consume a day, how many calories are in a food type, they're talking about it in relation to the unit of kilocalories. Just so you know, so a kcal is one calorie and they are basically the same thing and they're used interchangeably between the two. Look out for that capital C to denote the fact that it's a calorie or a kilocal. Then alongside that, I want to explore how many kilocalories are recommended per day. So again, this is the same as saying how many calories should each person be taking in in terms of their intake per day. Now, this will vary. So many different people need different things. We have different ages, different heights, different weights, different activity levels, different demand on our muscles, depending on whether we do resistance or cardio. So there's lots of different requirements for the amount of calories that we need to consume. But there is a guideline. And the overall general guideline is that an adult female would consume 2000 kilocalories per day. And an adult male would consume 2,500 kilocalories per day. But you can do equations that would literally clarify exactly what that is for you or for your client. And the good thing about this is that then you know you're getting the right calorie requirement for that person rather than actually guessing. And you actually know that you're getting maintenance or uh, weight gain or weight loss, depending on what you require. But it's about making sure that that calorie amount is what you're asking for or what you're aiming towards. So the guidelines is 2000 and 2500. You will need to know that for your level three nutrition exam. Then alongside that, one other key calculation that you may want to be able to do is converting the information you see of a calorie to a kilojoule. Now you'll see this on the back of food packets. So next time you have some food packets open, have a little look on the back of the label and you'll notice that the energy is written both in kilocals and kilojoules. Notice that the guidelines of how many we assume each day is in calories, but sometimes things are written in kilojoules. Now, if you wanted to work something out into kilojoules, then you take the number of calories and you times it or multiply it by 4.2, and then that will give you the number of kilojoules. So again, it's just another measurement 
of energy. It's just a unit measurement of energy. So that's the conversion between kilocals and kilojoules. Now, the other thing that you do need to know about calories is how this relates to macronutrients. We have different sources of energy in our bodies and what we use from the food that we ingest. So that's going to be our main macronutrients, which include carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Now, there are a certain number of calories associated per gram of each of these. So carbohydrates have four calories per gram. Proteins also have four calories per gram and the fats are going to be nine calories per gram. You can also get energy from alcohol, but it can't be converted easily to glycogen to actually use, but that is seven calories per gram. So you'll see that you have four, four and nine as your main macronutrients, which show the number of calories per gram of the food that you're consuming. And notice it's varying depending on the macronutrient we're talking about. So actually that gives you an understanding of the main key things you're going to need to know ready for your level three nutrition exam. If you do get stuck on any of these concepts or anything else relating to your nutrition exam, make sure you check out the link that's alongside this video to help you in relation to our level three nutrition revision boot camp. that will break everything down and make all this terminology super simple to understand. Alongside that, make sure you check out the three mock questions that are at the bottom of the blog. And thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.